the Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array, ALMA, is the largest existing astronomical project. It's the single telescope of revolutionary design composed of 66 high precision antennas working together at millimeter and submillimeter wavelengths. Although the European, American and Asian antennas differ in the design, all of them work at equal capacity. They are the most precise antennas ever made. They are so precise, they can maintain perfect shapes to within a fraction of a human hair on the entire surface. Europe and North America provided 25 antennas each, which composed the main array, and East Asia the remaining 16, which formed the Atacama Compact Array. Both arrays work together in order to enhance the latter's wide field imaging capacity. Alma is located in Atacama in Chile the world's driest desert at an altitude of 5,000 meters above sea level. Its location is not accidental. The biggest enemy of the radio telescopes is the air humidity. That's why Atacama was the one and only possible place for the observatory. It's literally one of the driest places on Earth, with 11 dry months and only one humid, February, when the observatory goes through a detailed maintenance. The altitude of 5,000 meters above sea level is also reasoned by decreased humidity. Although it's located so high, it's not the highest located telescope in the world. Right next to it, on the summit of mountain Chachnantor, of 5,640 meters above sea level is located another infrared telescope, TAO. In the future, we will be building the antennas higher and higher in order to decrease the interferences caused by humidity to minimum. Working at such a high attitude is very exhausting for the body and not everyone is allowed to the high side. Going by the health and safety protocols, everyone who is going up has to go through medical checkups at the bottom and on the top of the observatory area. One is also not allowed to stay at the high side for longer than two hours. Antennas can be configured at the larger area, where the distance between two outer ones is 14 kilometers or altogether with 150 meters distance, depending on the desired spectrum of the antennas. Each of them is mounted to a special panel in order to move it to the different location. The technicians is one of the two transporters designed especially for ALMA. 150 tons, uh -huh. a maximum speed of 20 kilometers an hour, <laughs> As I said, 150 tons and can move in the antenna with over 100 tons each. As a feather. <laughs> well, when the truck is fully loaded, it's actually um, has a maximum speed of about uh, 6 kilometers an hour. The, uh, the time we just made 45 minutes in this, mm -hmm. uh, 30 something kilometers, <laughs> yeah. usually takes about 5 6 hours. Well, if the wind speed, it is the right one. Because actually, it has to need that position uh -huh. to be grabbed by a transport. But it's pretty tall, actually, it's taller than the building. And then, if the wind speed reaches a limit, it can be moved. No, that's true. Mm -hmm. That's why we can plan mm -hmm. the moving of the antennas or, and everything, we can mm -hmm. plan it. But in real terms, what is the antennas are possible to move today or tomorrow? It will it will be tell by the weather conditions and well, mm -hmm. it's not a hard environment. Mm -hmm. And then that's why the astronomer has like different projects. Mm 
and they have to find out every day whether the ones are possible to run in that moment. And when the idea, for example, just to grab the antenna and detach from the ground and put it up and just that maneuver takes about an hour. Mm. To plug in the antenna, all the maneuver is another hour. <laughs> Data captured by the antenna is processed by the correlator, one of the most powerful supercomputers in the world, located also at the high side. Alma is a great example of a worldwide collaboration where scientists from all over the globe are searching for our cosmic origins. But what does it exactly mean? Something that is percepted as an interference at the other observatories, the cosmic dust, left by celestial bodies like comets or a leftover after cosmic explosions. A dust from which new stars and galaxies are formed. It's however only one of many projects currently running at ALMA. Some of them are still unpublished due to their confidentiality. Every scientist has a right to protect the discoveries for a certain amount of time. In the end, science is like every other subject, and it needs budget to be continued. So, here especially, the competition is very high. observations when they recover all the data. The group of astronomers or the team that got this time of observation, they has the property of this data for 12 months. How they share it and how they use that data. Looks eventually 12 months later, that data is released publicly. In this moment, I'll pass from the break time. Yeah, well, answer it unfortunately <laughs> I can't tell you uh, yeah. what we are watching but I can tell it is so I don't know it's a supernova I can tell it is a planetary system I can tell it is a quasar <laughs> but they can tell even yeah. to us what they are watching that one is. Oh, it's part of this uh, system I see. and what will be the biggest discovery so far for Alma well Alma published already um, number of discoveries Alma since the beginning even when the Alma wasn't complete you know just with a few antennas in that moment already proved to be the most powerful device for its radio astronomy uh, Alma got complete just in the second half of last year you know and then did that all the observations with the fully equipment will be released by the Alma is regularly publishing its discoveries at the website www.almaobservatory.org. You can find there also more details regarding the project and book a free tour to the observatory, which I'd like to highly recommend you to do, as it's super interesting. Thanks for watching. Eat, share, travel.